Connie Russell and Ashanti Johnson are living every couple's dream, the arrival of their first child. But what should be a time of celebration is about to become a test of faith. We visited our primary uh, OBGYN. We were going in to pretty much find out the uh, sex of the baby. We found out we're having a boy, but at the same time, you also you know, get hit with a curveball that your son is diagnosed with this um, ailment that affects one out of 8,000 babies. Everything of what you thought your pregnancy would, would, would go like, it goes out the window. The news is grim. Their child's bladder is blocked, and even with surgery, he may not live to see his own birthday. So for the first time ever, doctors will attempt an amazing procedure using a life-saving device pioneered right here in Miami. For this unborn child, it will mean the difference between life and death. Now, just 18 weeks into the pregnancy, doctors are about to operate on Connie and Ashanti's baby. Remarkably, while he's still inside his mother's womb. And it will be months before the couple will know if doctors have been able to prevent deadly kidney failure. What these doctors and soon-to-be parents don't know is they're about to be thrown an unexpected twist. Quickly it became, you know, man, I, I just hope I get a chance to see my son's eyes. The last 30 minutes, it started to hit me like, okay, I'm about to have surgery. They're going to operate on my baby. It was, it was overwhelming, but at the same time, I kept saying, you know, to Ashanti, we're making the right decision. Hello, I'm Jay Adams and welcome to Breakthrough Medicine. We're expecting. Those words will change the rest of your life, especially the first nine months. Soon, you're building cribs and deciding whether to paint the room pink or blue. Like Connie Russell and Ashanti Johnson of Miami, who are about to become first-time parents. My expecting date is March 11th and to prepare. How am I preparing to have my first baby? I'm praying and I'm hoping that these maternal instincts will kick in. But while all babies are blessings, the couple has just discovered that not all pregnancies are the same. Barely four months along, Connie and Ashanti have received news that has them preparing for the worst. Two weeks ago, so around my 16th week or so, um, and they did the ultrasound and found out it was a boy and I was excited because I want all boys and then I mean, I could see a black spot in his stomach, but I didn't know what that was. And then they're like, well, the doctor wants to speak to you. I cried. Um, first thoughts, you know, someone tells you something like that. You know, I'm like, well, what does this mean? You heard your baby's heartbeat. It's a boy. You know, you're attached. So you just want to figure out how to fix it and just get something resolved as soon as possible. Now, instead of picking out names, Connie and Ashanti are preparing for an extraordinary event. Doctors at U Health, University of Miami Health System, and Jackson Memorial Hospital will try to save their son's life by operating on his bladder while he's still inside his mother's womb. Dr. Ruben Quintero will lead the team, placing a small plastic tube called a shunt into the baby's bladder so it can drain properly. This is a new kind of shunt with an anchor that holds it in place, designed by Dr. Quintero himself and found only at U Health. It's a dangerous procedure, but the risk of doing nothing is even greater. If nothing is done, typically this will lead to damage of the kidneys of the fetus. When the baby is born, the damage to the kidneys may result in death of the baby at approximately 90% of the time. We were happy to find out that uh, we were being sent to Dr. Quintero over at UM and you know initially we didn't really realize how lucky we were to be living in Miami because we just assumed you know this is an issue uh, our physician was referring us to a specialist per se and um, you know the more and more we read we actually found out that this guy is just not merely a specialist we're, we're lucky enough that you know, we just got to travel three miles down the causeway to go see this guy who pioneered um, these surgeries so the morning of surgery has arrived quickly. 
Every day, the blockage is causing further damage to the baby's kidneys, so doctors are wasting no time. Connie is just moments away from undergoing a life-saving procedure on her unborn child. Right now, his name is just a little baby, <laughs> little baby boy, but um, I just want want him to know that mommy loves him, daddy loves him, and that as silly as it sounds, we really want you to come out peeing. <laughs> we can't wait till you're here running around and you're going to beat this. You're a strong baby and mommy and daddy are doing everything possible. She's brought to the operating room and she's placed on the operating table. Using ultrasound, we guide the trocar, which is a a thick needle through the skin of the mother, through the uterus, into the amniotic cavity, through the skin of the baby, and finally into the bladder. We look inside the bladder with an endoscope. The purpose of looking with the endoscope is to document that we are inside the bladder, and we also try to determine what is the actual cause of the obstruction. Uh, documentation of being inside the bladder. See? Bingo. Look at that. That different or what? So here's the theoretical obstruction there. Eh? So we're inside the fetal bladder. We're inside the bladder of the baby. That's where the baby will be peeing from. Once we have concluded the endoscopic part of the procedure, then we go back to ultrasound to deploy the new device, the new shunt. The new shunt is deployed using ultrasound. We can see with ultrasound how the device advances into the bladder. So there's the shunt, you see the outside part, that's where we put the suture. That's perfect, look at that. Beautiful, okay, so, see? This is the baby's skin. This is the shunt outside of the skin, the sandwich part. Maybe that's the placenta. Local cord, here's the shunt, see? Nice shot right there. Here is da 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 da. da. You can get up here is the cord. The baby's mouth. Okay. And bottom. Okay. All right. Back to you. Okay, we're doing great. Yep, drained. That's it, done. From here until birth. Okay? Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Okay, everything went great. Okay. Everything went perfect. Excellent. Perfect. Okay? Okay, okay. So we were able to get inside the baby. Okay. We were able to put in the shunt. Okay. The shunt is in the right place inside okay. the bladder and outside of the baby's skin. Okay. The bladder is already, is already draining, it's already, you know. Okay, okay. Uh, it's kind of emptying itself. Okay. She did fine, no bleeding, no complications. Okay. Okay. Excellent. So, Excellent. The procedure in and of itself was very uh, emotionally gut-wrenching in a sense. Um, it, it went pretty successfully. So, you know, we're not totally out of the woods yet. Uh, we still have to go in every single week and observe. Uh, how the baby's kidney function is, but I don't really know if there's a, an adjective that properly describes or really wraps up uh, how I felt. I think it, it obviously, you know, feelings of elation, joy, happiness, um, but just thankfulness more than anything. I'm doing great. The baby's active and kicking. Our weekly appointments have been going very well. Um, it seems that he's, the baby's developing at a normal rate, probably above average. He's very active and you know no um no side effects on my end and it seems that he doesn't have any either so if you think this story is over so did connie and ashanti but when we return doctors deliver connie's baby and make a stunning discovery that changes everything things became much more uh, dramatic let's say We'll also meet two more of Miami's smallest miracles saved by breakthrough procedures right here in South Florida. Stay with us. Today I'm 
bit excited. I'm just happy to have friends and family here. I'm about 34 weeks, so pretty soon, any day now. <laughs> we picked the name. We we're, we're going with Kayla. So we were going for Ashanti Jr., but I wasn't able to get that one through the uh, decision-making process. Over the uh, next several weeks, we will just, you know, mentally try to prepare for what it's like to be parents. So we think we know what it's like, but I, obviously we won't know what it's like until that moment. So you know, we, have, we have enough faith and strength that we'll make it through okay. That day has come sooner than they had hoped. Just one week after the baby shower, Connie and Ashanti have returned to Jackson Memorial Hospital, where you health doctors will perform a C-section. Doctors won't know Caleb's true condition until he's born. Feeling, uh, I guess like most fathers, pretty nervous, but um, kind of calm at the, at the same time. I think if we, the fact that we've made it this far, you kind of realize that we didn't make this far by, um, you know, by anything that we've done, you know, it's kind of been in God's hands since day one. So just kind of along for the ride and uh, looking forward to, you know, what's going to happen about 45 minutes from now. The decision for the C-section was that we initially tried to induce her for natural labor, but um, she was not progressing as um, adequately as we would like. Our goal was to keep her pregnant up to uh, the point of term pregnancy, which she has reached at this point. And we have seen that the shunt has re remained successfully in place, creating adequate amniotic fluid volume around the baby. So at this point, she's already reached term pregnancy, and we like to have the baby delivered so we can hand it over to the neonatologist and the pediatric urologist to further evaluate the baby and um, take it over from there. Doctors are rushing Caleb to Holtz Children's Hospital Neonatal Intensive Care Unit for a full examination. And this is where our story takes another turn. Caleb is quickly diagnosed with a rare condition known as MMIH, a disorder that cannot be diagnosed until after birth. Well, initially, again, we were extremely happy to see that the baby was passing urine because that, in a way, eliminated the possibility of a severe obstruction of the bladder. Things changed afterwards, obviously. Within the next hours, when we realized the that the diagnosis was different, things became much more uh, dramatic, let's say. So the surgery that the baby had uh, during the second day of life was essentially to remove the shunt. During the surgery, Dr. Neville observed right away that the colon was extremely small, and with that, the diagnosis became much more clear in terms of a MMIH. It's an unexpected twist for Caleb's story and devastating news for his parents. MMIH syndrome is a deadly disorder of the abdominal and digestive muscles that prevents the stomach, intestines, kidney, and bladder from working correctly. It is so rare, the number of people ever to have survived the disorder would not even fill this room. Caleb's future is now uncertain. So uncertain, his parents have asked us to stop filming while they consider the medical options available to them. Their U Health doctors agree and continue to focus on saving Caleb's life. While Caleb's family is counseled by a team of specialists, other miracles are taking place right here in South Florida, such as baby Elijah, whose undeveloped lungs gave him very little chance of survival before being referred to the University of Miami Health System and Jackson Memorial Hospital. Dr. Quintero and Dr. Andrew Collin used their expertise to go inside his tiny lungs while still in the womb, 
It was a rare and remarkable procedure with one goal in mind, to save the life of another unborn baby. This was an unusual procedure in that uh, nobody has ever done this before. Uh, we were requested uh, to uh, look into the lungs of this child uh, in utero. Dr. Quintero inserted a small tube uh, through the abdominal wall into the mouth of the baby, which he identified by ultrasound. As we were going in, we were washing out uh, debris, uh, and that may explain the abnormalities of the lung that appeared to have been uh, evolving. The right lung being uh, extremely uh, small, and the left lung uh, being with obvious uh, enlargement and uh, congenital abnormalities. The uh, perinatologist was able to identify an increase of the lung size on the right, uh, probably by about 30%, and was also able to show that there was ventilation of the uh, expanded left lung. And so the original plans to potentially remove the left lung uh, were, were abandoned. And uh, during the coming weeks, uh, it was evident that this is going to become a viable baby. Let Thank you, go. you so much. Okay. Take care. Appreciate everything. Bye, Elijah. Bye. God bless you. One of the big advantages of uh, our unit at UM Jackson Memorial Hospital is that being an academic institution, every faculty, every physician who is responsible for these patients is involved in research. And because of that, we are able to provide the latest forms of therapy for this very complicated patients. What sets our program apart, we have some of the finest outcomes and in, we provide care in the most compassionate and caring way. When we look at the research and we look at the teamwork and we look at the health of children and we say, how do we bring this together? Our overriding goal is for kids and their families to have the highest quality of life, to have really the best outcomes possible. And that was the goal for baby Emma, who was diagnosed with a hole in her diaphragm that caused her liver to push into her chest and squeeze her developing lungs, a condition that affects one in 2,500 babies. While Emma was still inside the womb, Dr. Quintero inserted a device that helped expand the lungs, stimulate their growth, and push the liver back into her abdomen. It was a groundbreaking procedure that may have saved Emma's life. In the case of baby Emma, we had diagnosed her as having congenital diaphragmatic hernia with the liver being up in the chest. These babies typically do not survive. The procedure in Emma's case went very well. Surgery was essentially uneventful. The mother went into labor two weeks later. Postnatally, Emma did extremely well. She did not have any complications in the newborn intensive care unit, and she had the repair of the hernia within the first week of life. U-Health pediatric surgeon Dr. Holly Neville repaired the hole in Emma's diaphragm just days after her birth. Emma's recovery was then in the hands of the nurses and support staff in the NICU at Holt Children's Hospital. Everyone is very sweet, uh, caring, they understand what we're going through. You know, they, they treat you like a human being, not like some, some customer or some client somewhere. Especially with her, she's, she's a baby, she needs that care, that nurturing. And when mom, when mom is not around, I know that the nurses are always there for her and always caring and sitting and talking to her. We get attached to the babies, you know, they become almost like your kids, you know. If something goes wrong, it hurts you because you don't want to see anything happen to them. You love it when they start smiling, they recognize your voice, they smile, they listen. And it's great. So that's why we try to um, encourage moms to visit as much as possible, get to know your baby, and we'll get you ready for home. I just want to tell you that 
I love you very much. I knew that you would be okay. And I knew that God would bring you to be with me now. And I hope that you never forget him and you never forget that you're very strong. You're a very, very strong baby, a very strong girl. And if you went through this, you can go through anything in life. Just weeks later, Emma is home and growing quickly. Her parents credit the breakthrough procedure performed by U Health specialists and Emma's follow-up care in the NICU for saving their daughter's life. I am definitely happy with this decision because if I had not done it, uh, there would have been much more complications. I know that they're the best of the best and that they're always getting recognition for their doctors, the nurses, everything. I trusted them and and I'm glad that I did because everything went well. The U-Health pediatric specialists have been providing hope for Connie and Ashanti as well as they treat their son Caleb, born with an incredibly rare disorder. Several weeks after the new diagnosis, the couple once again steps in front of our cameras. Now that we found out he had MMIH, this, this intestinal disorder, when you look at the numbers on MMIH, we were told he was the 70th case ever, not, not one in 70 a year, he's number 70 since the beginning of time. So when you really think about the statistics behind that, there's a reason he's the 70th case. He's the 70th case because most kids who have MMIH never even made it through the entire pregnancy, number one. It's been a, from a, a point of elation to pure, pure, you know, uh, a sense of panic because you think you're gonna lose them only to find out, um, you know, everything was kind of already pre, pre, predestined and it went from being a potentially horrible situation to now we're finding out that um, part of his uh, digestive system does work. You know, we might have to reroute some piping and um, <laughs> maybe do a transplant, but uh, man, he's, he's just, he just keeps defying the odds. So we're, we're blessed. Caleb, the tiny baby born against all odds, is now five months old and growing fast. He is, in many ways, a breakthrough baby. It's no surprise that parents like Connie and Ashanti develop strong bonds with the people fighting to save their children. In a moment, we'll meet some of these families as they come together in a very special reunion. All of these children were diagnosed through a routine ultrasound during pregnancy. To schedule your appointment or to learn more about prenatal or pediatric services at UHealth, log on to uhealthsystem.com. We'll be right back. It would be easy to believe that Caleb, Emma, and Elijah are rare stories of courage and hope. But in reality, almost 20,000 infants die every year in the United States before their first month. It takes an experienced team of specialists to turn those tiny babies into small miracles. And this year, for the first time, doctors and babies have come together again to celebrate life. Well, this is my survivor, Hannah, and she will be two in June. And I just, I'm so thankful to everyone at UM for giving me my babies. We found out at 19 weeks that we had the twin to twin transfusion syndrome. So we went into surgery um, the same day that we met Dr. Kantopoulos. We'll forever remember what everybody in Miami did for us, did for these babies. Although we have a very, very high success rate, probably the highest success rate of any fetal therapy center in the world, we are extremely humble. We do our best to try and save the life of the fetus, but we're also very humble and accepting that sometimes that's not possible. When we lose a baby or when we lose a fetus, uh, regardless of how much effort or how much or how hard we try, in fact, to save it, we accept that very humbly. So the, the butterflies represent those babies that are not here with us today, that passed away uh, either in the womb or after birth, that unfortunately could not be here, but that nonetheless are still here in spirit. Today's event is the first that we have in Miami. It's an 
unbelievable event because it gives us a chance to get to know the babies now in person, now on earth, now in real life, the way they are and the way that they will be. For them to be here with their babies is in a way a manifestation of all of the courage and all of the love that they had. So this is a true celebration of life. To learn more about obstetric and pediatric services provided by U Health Physicians, please call 305-243-4000. You can also email a member of our team at uhealthsystem.com. I'm Jay Adams, inviting you to join us next time for Breakthrough Medicine. Thanks for watching.